Hello, everyone, and welcome back to The Lost Bots. I'm your host with the most tattoos, Jeffrey Gardner. And I actually can't say that anymore because I'm joined by my new co-host, whom you may remember from our previous episode, Mr. Stephen Davis. Ah, you lost. It's great. Fantastic. Welcome, Steve. Welcome to the show. Appreciate it, man. So we've both been fielding a ton of questions lately, kind of oddly, actually, around how to successfully deploy a sim. And from those questions, we developed five pillars of success. So those five pillars are create clear goals and use cases, plan the architecture around those use cases and data sources, don't gather data you don't ultimately need or can't use, align your risk tolerance with use cases, and prepare for expansion at your own pace. So given that we have those five pillars, um, I thought it would be kind of interesting if we each picked our top three and explained the why behind why there are top choices. So uh, beggar can't be teaser. Steve, you go first. What are your top three and the why? Um, all right. So I think I'm going to go with number one, create clear goals and use cases. Number three, don't gather data that you don't ultimately need or can't use. Uh, and then number five, prepare for expansion at your own pace. So, so why why did you choose those as I stroke my non-luscious bird? Go ahead. Well, num number one is obvious, right? Like you have a sim, what are the clear goals, expectations, and use cases for that, right? Um, as, as far as getting it set up, like do you have a roadmap for the deployment? Like, do you have teams dedicated? Because, you know, with Sims comes the need for various data sources. So do you have your team together, knowledgeable of the product, knowledgeable of, of the, the entire end goal in order to get that Sim stood up and configured correctly um, and, and quickly, right? You want a good uh, ROI, return on investment for that because uh, Sims cost money. Um, now, as far as additional goals, you have the SIM up and running, well, then who's maintaining it? What are your workflows internally for that? Alerts fire off. You have a SOC team or you might be, you know, uh, you know, renting a SOC out. Well, how does the how does the communication work? If it's an internal team, who's handling the triage of the alerts? Who's able to go out there and effectively manage that SOC team, right? Who's also keeping the, the SIM up to date and healthy? If it runs off agents, who's maintaining the agent health so that your entire organization is ultimately covered uh, so that your SOC analysts can root out and hunt out evil and, and effectively you know, perform remediations and things like that. So having clear goals of you know, not even the end time goal, but how you can achieve those end time goals is a huge uh, part of one of the reasons why I, I chose option one. Um, option three, don't gather data that you don't need or can't use. This one hits uh, a little close to home uh, for me because I've been part of, you know, many different, uh, you know, SIM configurations and, and deployments and things like that. And routinely they go great uh, for the first amount of time, depending on, you know, your deployment timeline could be weeks, could be days and stuff like that. But ultimately it, it seems to veer off on that path of, well, we also want to bring in these data sources and we want to bring in these individuals to help, you know, manage the SIM. And the problem is, is if there's no real value for those data sources and those individuals in there, you're going to waste a lot of man hours, right? If they don't, if those data sources don't add good context or help increase the alerting capabilities uh, for those detections, back burner those, right? Get the SIM up and running with any of the foundational uh, data sources you have that provide the most visibility into your network uh, and into your environment, and then worry about those offshoots like SQL logs. As an example, not saying those are more or less important than anything else. You don't like uh, transaction logs? I mean, you know. yeah, you know, transaction logs, you know, the, the uh, oh my gosh, some of the, I don't even want to spill out some of those ones, but they people know. know what I'm talking about. Some of those like logs that eh, they don't really do much outside of log retention, maybe. Uh, they're not going to add much to the platform or, or to the SIM. Right. So don't waste your time on those back burner them uh, and then really work on uh, the data sources and the elements of your SIM that are going to provide you the best uh, visibility into your environment and actionable intelligence, so on and so forth. Uh, and then for number five, prepare for expansion at your own pace. That is extremely important. You want your SIM 
to provide as much visibility into your environment, your organization as possible. As your organization grows, or maybe it shrinks, whatever the case, whichever direction, as it will go with as it grows, you want your sim to be able to grow in tandem with it. Okay, you, do, you want to be proactive with that. You don't want to be retroactive with that, right? Um, so kind of going in line with number three, don't put things into the sim that you don't ultimately need. You know, build out your sim with the, the expectation that you need to add more and that you can easily conf and configure things to add more and not have to tear it back down because you're like, oh, I wasn't expecting to have to add all of this stuff. So I didn't set it up that way in the beginning. Now I have to redo it. That's again, man hours. Uh, that could be missed alerts, uh, which nobody who works in cyber or a SOC environment likes to handle anything related to missed alerts because uh, that sucks. <laughs> Yeah, that's the only word I can think of. That sucks. Um, so prepare for the expansion. If you know that you are, uh, a good example of that is if you know you are changing out firewalls as a data source example, uh, do a little proactive research. Make sure your SIM can handle those firewalls. If they can't, make see if there's a, a workaround or maybe something on the roadmap for that. Just be knowledgeable of what your SIM can do and what it's going to be able to do in the future so that you can align it the best way with your growing organization. I like it. There was a, there was a shrinkage joke in there for your number five, but I'm not going to go there. We'll save that for another episode. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> I, I agree with you completely on number one with the use cases. Um, we've, we've had use cases all day. The one thing I'll add to your number one is um, for those use cases, develop some clear metrics of how, like, what does it actually mean to be successful in that use case, because that's going to allow you to demonstrate the success going forward. If you don't, it's like uh, running a marathon without an end goal. You're just going to run, and how do you know if you're ever successful? How do you ever met that use case? I don't know. We're just going to play it by ear. Um, but that also kind of goes into the my number two, which is oddly enough, number two, number two. Uh, my number two, I'm going to stop laughing whenever every time I say that. Plan the architecture around your use case um, and data sources. So. I've had horror stories with this back in the days of MPLS connections and WAN links being one to three megs, sending lots of data over a pipe back to a data center, clogging the pipes, which no one wants to do. And then, you know, just your SIM stops working, data stops coming from the business, and everybody's pretty much pissed off at SOC for taking up all the space. So if you were to plan that deployment today, in that use case, I'd say, okay, you have disparate sites, you need to have a centralized collector, we can throw that up in the cloud because most internet pipes are bigger than WAN links. So it's just being conscious of how that data is moving your environment, where it's going, having alternate routes in case your primary route goes down. So if you do send it over a WAN link, make sure the cloud's an option or if the cloud, you know, vice versa, it can go through to a traditional data center. Um, just be aware of the cost of shipping all that data around because it's not going to your AP department, but everything still does have some kind of a cost at the end of the day. Um, and lastly, my last one is number four, um, align risk tolerance to use cases. So that's kind of tend to goes up to the board level, but um, if your use cases aren't addressing risk in some way and they're not you know, lowering your risk or better preparing you to address said risk, then it's not really when it gets reported up to the board, which is all risk and cost, it's really not gonna go anywhere. So if you align those use cases to reduce your risk, then everyone gets along hunky-dory, the board is happy, your operations people are happy, and you actually get things done at the end of the day. You'll get those funds to demonstrate the ROI so you can expand as opposed to having this just dead piece of tech sitting in your environment and you don't know how to properly say whether it was successful or not. So we've arrived at the end point, and as you've no doubt heard multiple times, multi-pull, figure out which movie that is, and you get five points times today uh use case use case use case um you know planning measure twice cut once the more you train you know you sweat in peace the less you bleed more whatever the analogy that you want to use the more you plan up front the more successful you're going to be in the end um, and that will actually lead you to a successful sim deployment because you can demonstrate said success at the end of the day if you can't demonstrate success then it doesn't matter how successful you are because no one's going to know about it except for you, which doesn't do anyone any good. So if you like this series and want to see it grow, please remember to share this out to your networks, tweet, gram, vine, people still do that. And if you have ideas for topics you'd like us to cover, please let us know in the comments section. And I hope you all have a wonderful day and the rest of your week. And I hope you all take care. See you later, everybody. <laughs>